It's Friday the 1st of May from the Channel M newsroom. This is the lunchtime news and these are today's headlines. <laughs> Ambitious plans to turn Manchester into the White Hall of the North. I think it's a significant step forward because on the back of things, for example, like the BBC move up into Salford Quays, this is yet another huge amount of government jobs that are coming out of the South East, out of London. <laughs> Also coming up, this is the Manchester academic who's been named the new Poet Laureate. And the toddlers raising money for meningitis after one of them was struck down by the virus. My heart just sank really because I've heard horror stories about what ha can happen to children if, if they don't get caught, the treatment doesn't get started in time. But the whole time she didn't really seem like she was that poorly and I couldn't believe that that was what she had. Good afternoon. First this lunchtime, thousands of civil servants could soon be leaving their desks in London and moving north to Manchester. Plans have been revealed for a new office complex near a disused railway station that could become home to 5,000 of them. Nina Warhurst is there. It's exactly the kind of site you could quite easily walk past without appreciating its history or indeed its potential. Mayfield Station is just opposite Piccadilly here in the city centre. Now, it was built in 1910 to service Manchester's growing suburbs, but in the 50s, as Piccadilly was modernised, Mayfield became increasingly obsolete. And in 1960, it finally hit the buffers for good. Once efficient and well used inside, it's now more like a ghost town. But here in Manchester, we know that change is an important part of improvement. And Mayfield Station could soon be knocked down to build what's being called the White Hall of the North, a campus the size of 10 football pitches for around 5,000 civil servants from around the region and potentially thousands more who'd be relocated from London. This is yet another huge amount of government jobs that are coming out of the South East, out of London, being based in what is really becoming now the real second city outside of uh, outside of the southeast and I think it will bring with them uh, a huge amount of jobs and a huge amount of investment at a much needed time. But not everybody's impressed. I suppose taking in consideration the uh, financial you know the recession that we've got the recession that we're in um, I mean finances are tight taking a building down like this putting up a big structure I don't know maybe it won't, won't go down too well with uh, Manchester uh, people living in Manchester, but I, you know, it's not a bad thing. I suppose civil servants do need a central place to come and work from. I, I don't see why uh, a civil servants' usage wouldn't be a good use of the space, but so I understand it's an old railway depot, and I would have thought it might be more useful to turn it back to its original purpose. Especially considering Piccadilly, so yes, chocolate. With the overcrowding at Piccadilly, yes. Do join me at five when I'll be talking to local MP and Minister for the North West, Beverly Hughes, about whether the potential for this site will actually become a reality. Thanks, Nina. An NHS worker is waiting to hear if he is the first person in Britain to catch swine flu from another person. Graham Pacitti from Falkirk fell ill after being in contact with a newlywed couple who just got back from their honeymoon in Mexico. He's been given antiviral drugs and he's being treated at home. That as Mexico begins a shutdown of part of the country to try to control the outbreak. Restaurants and cinemas are just some of the businesses shutting their doors. Leaflets are being handed out at three mosques in Bolton to try to catch whoever murdered a student back in February. Umar Wasim's body was found in a car park in Anglesarki near Chorley. His ankles and wrists had been bound and he'd been severely beaten. He was an active member of the Muslim community and police think they might be able to get important information from people going to Friday prayers. Four men waiting, are waiting to hear how long they'll be jailed for after police smashed a major Class A drugs ring in South Manchester. They've admitted charges including possession of cocaine and conspiring to supply it. Armed officers found the drugs in a flat in Withenshaw last August. A man has been stabbed in Manchester city centre. Ambulance and police were called to a car park on Deansgate opposite the cathedral at around half past four. They found the victim with two knife wounds to his shoulder. His condition's not thought to be life-threatening. Mourners turning up to funerals in Bolton have ended up getting parking fines. It's happened twice in two weeks at the United Reformed Church as grieving families attend services. I'd like the, something to happen as the traffic warden to show some discretion and some respect to the people that's attending these funeral services. Yesterday we had a, another funeral take place and there was actually four vehicles with black flags attached to the windows 
and various other vehicles, private vehicles, attached to the cortege that was also booked and issued tickets. I informed the wardens. The warden commented, I wish I wasn't here. My return comment was, well, you've no need to be. And she said, it's my job, I've got to do it. A group of mums and toddlers from Hazel Grove have raised hundreds of pounds for a meningitis charity. Their fundraising walk had to be postponed last month after one of the group contracted the potentially deadly illness. I went along to find out more. Oh, little ducks went out one day over the hill and holiday. Oh, it's great. Really, kids really enjoyed themselves and they'd made hats to wear and... Uh, they enjoyed wandering around the gardens and thinks it was a good good day. This toddle waddle by mums and children from a crash in Hazel Grove was originally planned for a month ago till one of the youngsters became seriously ill. Sarah, her child mind, had noticed that Abby was a bit tired and very just a bit generally unwell. And then the next morning when I we got up, she was covered in a rash. Um, and I'd known, I recognised the rash straight away that it, could be septicemia and that she might have meningitis so I did the glass test where you push a glass onto the rash and it didn't disappear so then at that point I realised it was serious. I'd seen some leaflets and things about what the symptoms are and what to look for um, but it was the fact that the toddle waddled was imminent that just brought it straight to my mind. So the event had to be postponed but now one month on and after a full recovery Abby and her friends completed their fundraiser. I've got six toddles, my sister's got five toddles and then my friend Hayley's come with her toddles. We've had loads of leaflets through so we try and work, tell the parents, give them all the leaflets and things and today with this toddle waddle I think more people know about meningitis now and we're trying to get through to all the mums. The mums say they've raised almost a thousand pounds for the meningitis trust and now they hope it'll pay for more information for parents to know what warning signs to look out for. My heart just sank really because I've heard horror stories about what ha can happen to children if, if they don't get caught, the treatment doesn't get started in time. The whole time she didn't really seem like she was that poorly and I couldn't believe that that was what she had. And then just her recovery and seeing her running around today, it's uh, full from uh, despair to full joy, it's brilliant. Another two days of searches are being carried out at Heaton Park by anti-terror police. It's understood they began looking there after finding photos taken there of men arrested in raids last month. Search dogs and metal detectors are being used. The RSPCA is trying to find two youths who beat a swan to death at a lake in Wigan. The bird was sitting on a nest of eggs when a member of the public saw the pair attacking it last Friday. The animal inspector who's dealing with the case has described what happened as horrendous. Those responsible could be jailed. Madeline McCann's parents will release a picture later showing how their daughter might now look if she's still alive. Sunday will mark two years since she went missing just before her fourth birthday. A forensic artist has studied photos of her to come up with the image, which will be used on a new poster campaign to try to find her. Seven people have been arrested by police investigating a brawl at a pub in ashton under -Line last November. Trouble broke out while fans were watching the Manchester Derby football match, which spilled out into the street. CCTV pictures of two more people officers want to speak to have also been released. Several people were assaulted and one man was hit by a bottle. Students in Manchester have been enjoying free curries as part of an evening to get them thinking about crime prevention. The food was paid for by their students' union, with police giving advice on the side. Luckily, they had an extra place at the table for our reporter, Ben Bland. Oh, my Rogan Josh. It's free food. And what better way to grab the attention of students? At the Moon Restaurant in Withington, the dish of the day is crime prevention. I think it's very worthwhile because I've got um, my laptop stolen at my house. So um, it's good that they do this kind of thing so that students know more information. It's been good, yeah. It's nice to know that um, if we need help with anything, there are people around. And, um, yeah, it's, you have to keep yourself safe. No one's going to do it for you. Well, I haven't actually been a victim of crime myself, but I know quite a few people who have. Um, a couple of my housemates have been uh, robbed on their way home. Uh, just because they've been walking and rowing through uh, back streets. So it's just you know, about staying on the main streets and staying in big groups as well. I learned that you know, not just to put your uh, valuables on site because um, I, my room was locked and my window was locked, but uh, they could see my laptop, so they just put a brick through my window. And then, uh, so I'd learned that keep it out of sight and then it's more difficult for them to rob you. 
The night was paid for by Manchester University Students Union, but police were on hand to serve up ideas on personal and home safety. The majority of the evening has been based around personal safety. So we're looking at how the students can enjoy the city and get the most from the city while staying safe. So some of the topics we've covered, for instance, are uh, public transport, how to get from A to B, safely planning your routes, sticking to well-lit routes, you know, not getting off the beaten track, cutting through parks. Well, it may seem like something of a madrastic measure, but free curry for the students means police get a chance to get their message across. And they hope it'll be a recipe for success in making sure Manchester's students don't vinder lose out to the criminals. Ben Bland, Channel M News. Well, I think if we'd asked him to come up with any more puns, he could have curried on all day there. Time now for the lunchtime sports headlines with details on one of our football club's financial situations. Here's Ian Irving. Try and bring the standard up after that, James. Thank you. Supporters of Stockport County are still reeling from the news. The club have been placed into administration and docked 10 points. However, barring a couple of unlikely results in League One tomorrow, the Hatters won't be relegated, whatever the result, in their final league game of the season at Brighton. Meanwhile, Oldham have appointed former Darlington boss Dave Penny as their new manager, and he's under no illusions as to the size of the challenge at Boundary Park. Every football club, good. You want to, it's a challenge. You've got to sort of rebuild your own team and get your own team in place, um, both on and off the pitch. So that, that's the main aim: is, is to have a successful team that uh, plays attacking football, that's that's fit, um, and mobile and, and attractive to watch. And obviously, the tradition that the club's got is a proper footballing club. And um, I wanted to come to a proper footballing club and uh, and try and be successful at, at this level again. On to cricket now and Lancashire are up against it in their county championship game against Nottinghamshire who ended the day, uh, day two sorry, with a lead of 74 runs on 263 for six. And a few moments ago the score had moved on to 313 for seven. Wigan Warriors face St Helens in Rugby League's Magic Weekend in Edinburgh tomorrow and head coach Brian Noble is a, quite a fan of the scheme which will see his side run out at Murrayfield. Well, I think it's a fabulous idea. I think it gets everybody together, the Rugby League community and it showcases our great our great game in another in another window you know in a, in a venue that we're not normally at and that we might want to be at one day i love the occasion against st helens i think you know i think it brings out it should bring out the best in our players it certainly brings out the best in their players and you know after their loss of last week they'll be really really fired up but we need to be as enthusiastic and as determined to, to you know bring home the spoils Manchester City face Blackburn Rovers tomorrow, knowing a win would cement their place in the Premiership's top ten. But Mark Hughes is urging a note of caution, with his side facing a difficult run-in to the end of the season. We've got difficult games away from home, obviously, but uh, we need to win the home games that we have. And um, obviously, going to United is always difficult, um, as Tottenham saw to their cost last night and uh, the, other, the other week, rather, than Arsenal last night. So. Um, We'll go there, obviously, and with the view that we will get something out of the game. But if if we're honest, probably the the top game figures highly on our on our agenda. We we feel that will probably be a, a key game in in regards to qualification because obviously they they're in the mix along with ourselves. And we'll be hearing from United boss Sir Alex Ferguson ahead of their clash at Middlesbrough at five. There's been some good news for a sport which perhaps doesn't get the coverage it deserves. So when we heard the Great Britain cheerleading team had brought back a bronze medal from the World Championships, we just had to go and meet them. Let's go UK! It went really well. We came third in the world. So the routines went really good and we're all really proud. We're tired now, but it was an amazing experience. And it was good to learn a lot from the Americans as well because they're just amazing. So we were really happy to place third because you know, against the Americans and all every country in the world. Because it's, it's not that well-established a sport here, is it? So to come third yeah. isn't bad at all. Yeah, well, we're getting better. We are getting better. It is getting more popular in this country cheerleading. So it is taking off, but it was really educational as well to go over there and learn so much so we can increase our standard even more for next year, hopefully. Let's go, UK! Some news in brief for you now, and Floyd Mayweather Sr. said that Ricky Hatton's training camps ahead of his super fight with Manny Pacquiao have been upset by personality clashes. Hatton is due to fight the Filipino in Las Vegas on Saturday night, but his trainer has said the arguments at times had overshadowed his preparations. 
Manchester Phoenix have withdrawn for ice hockey's elite league in favour of competing in next season's English Premier League. And finally, the Bellevue Aces slipped to yet another defeat on their travels last night, going down 59 points to 34 against Swindon. Well, that's all your sport for now, but back to James, who's got some more news for you. Ian, thanks very much for the update. Plenty still to come this Friday lunchtime. A look ahead to a weekend where the Balearics are coming to Manchester and one for the ladies, the research that's worked out how many times the average woman wears her bra before washing it. I think it's Vivian just being very sort of scandalous and being typical Vivian really. Probably fine, she probably does wash them every week, but just sounds like she's just been a little bit, you know, a bit edgy in what Vivian does really. She is the lady that turned up at the pads without her knickers on, wasn't she? <laughs> Welcome back to Channel M's Lunchtime News. If you want to see more of our reports, log on to the website at channelm.co.uk. On there right now, the talented student whose hopes of a musical career could have to be put on hold because of the recession. And we take a look at the 2012 Olympic Stadium that's being made in Bolton. All that and more at channelm.co.uk. An academic from Manchester Metropolitan University has been named the first female Poet Laureate. Caroline Duffy's appointment is being officially announced at a ceremony in the centre of the city. From there, Beverly Walkton has this report. Caroline Duffy will be crowned Poet Laureate here at John Ryland's Library in Manchester this afternoon. So what does this important literary role mean? Well, for a start, Miss Duffy will be the first female Poet Laureate in its 341-year history. That's quite an amazing achievement. It'll also mean that she'll be the official poet to the royal household. And for that, she'll receive a salary of £5,000 a year. And she'll also receive a barrel of sherry. Although the outgoing po poet laureate, Andrew Motion, says he hasn't received his yet, so she'll be asking for hers up front. It's also a proud day for people in Manchester. Miss Duffy is a lecturer at Manchester University. No doubt everybody there will be extremely proud. Well, we'll be getting reaction from Miss Duffy at five o'clock, so tune in then. For now, it's back to the studio. Thanks, Bev. Next, a question for the ladies. How often do you wash your bra? Researchers have found the average woman leaves it two months and wears them around seven times before putting them in the laundry. There are fears that could cause skin problems and even stop them fitting so well. The report comes after Dame Vivian Westwood revealed she never washes hers, but instead uses talcum powder to get rid of the grease. We've got a great um, Balearic festival for you. Um, it starts tonight at six o'clock and it's going to go on till four o'clock on Monday. Um, we've got contemporary music, we've got folk music, people doing oh, I'm sorry, that's clearly not women telling us about how often they, uh, they wash their bras. I think we can now bring you that report now. Well, I would think they would wash them a bit more than that, generally speaking. I know I would. <laughs> I think it's absolutely disgusting, um, really grubby, me and myself, about two to three days. I think it's Vivian just being very sort of scandalous and being typical Vivian really, probably fine, she probably does wash them every week, but just sounds like she's just been a little bit, you know, a bit edgy in what Vivian does really. She is the lady that turned up at the pads without her knickers on, wasn't she? <laughs> okay. A study about women washing the bras every two months? No, I'd definitely wash mine more than that, that's disgusting. Thank you. Okay. Bras? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, well, <laughs> probably every couple of days, actually. Yeah. Or change, change it. it. Wash it. Wash it. Or wash yeah, every couple yeah. of days. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you're seeking sun this bank holiday weekend, forget the likes of Mallorca, Menorca and Ibiza. They're all going to be right here. A free event is taking place that's bringing the Balearics to Manchester's Albert Square. Shoppers will be able to soak up the Mediterranean atmosphere under two pavilions, packed with artists and dancers and musicians. We've got a great um, Balearic festival for you. Um, it starts tonight at six o'clock and it's going to go on till four o'clock on Monday. Um, we've got contemporary music, we've got folk music, people doing crafts, food, drink, um, Spanish flamenco guitar, we've got parades, stilt walkers, acrobats, and fabulous, fabulous horses who are going to do dressage. At nine o'clock tonight, there's these devils with fireworks that will be spinning, a big firework display, not in the sky, but actually devils holding fireworks. At 9.30, there's an amazing concert which goes on till 11 o'clock. That's a flamenco guitarist who's from the island. He's called Paco Fernandez. The thing started at 11 tomorrow, and then we've got a parade at one o'clock starting near Marks and Spencers and coming up 
here. That's with all the different giants and the, those parade people with enormous heads. And everything winds up um, on Monday. There's a parade at 11 o'clock on Monday, and the event runs, winds up about 4 o'clock. The sun's shining, and, uh, and it'll be a really, really great event. There'll be a few new faces at a Heritage Railway event in Bury this weekend. After some 20 years, Thomas the Tank Engine has been unavoidably delayed by his lawyers. Kevin Duffy has more. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Lanky. Are you doing anything this bank holiday weekend, Jimmy? Well, I wasn't planning anything, but a job's coming at the last minute. I'm going to go to Bury in Greater Manchester. That's right. The cold, hard world of lawyers and contracts has come crashing in to the gentle fantasy world of Thomas the Tank Engine. The Thomas the Tank Engine brand is owned by a, a, a company called Hit Entertainment. Um, who license Heritage Railways to hold days out with Thomas events. Um, the problem that we have is um, Hit Entertainment have issued a number of contractual um, changes to the agreements that are in place, and one of those contractual agreements is that every volunteer working at a day out with Thomas event on the railway, and not just at the event, has to have a Criminal Records Bureau check. Now, the East Lanks Railway team have no problem with volunteers having to have Criminal Records Bureau checks, but in the past, only a small number of volunteers directly involved had to have the checks. Under the new contract terms, every volunteer, and there's 400 of them, will have to have a CRB check. All of that means that the cost of having Thomas pay a visit is just impossibly high. Hit Entertainment didn't want to comment. Now you might say it's a bit of a shame that the children are being affected by this dispute but on the other hand perhaps it's no surprise that big business wants to protect its big brand. But in the meantime it's goodbye Thomas and hello Lanky. I'm Kevin Duffy for Channel M News. So the sun's out right now, is it going to stay that way for the weekend? With the forecast here's Michelle Eagleton. out today's weather it has been cloudy this morning this afternoon we are going to see a few showers but they should die out a little bit later on leaving a dry and bright evening across the region highs are between 16 and 17 for most of us so a mild night in store for friday but is it going to stay like that for your bank holiday weekend uh, i think that's a big question I can tell you that saturday and sunday are going to be very pleasant indeed we're expecting a lot of sunshine for saturday highs of 14 degrees not bad at all sunday uh, as I said is the same as saturday and monday is staying dry but a bit cloudy make the most of it because by tuesday we are expecting rain this is channel m our top stories plans have been announced to move thousands of civil servants from london to manchester a new development around piccadilly could house them in a new office complex Test results are due back later that could confirm the first case of swine flu here in the UK being passed from person to person. It's as Mexico starts shutting down businesses including restaurants and cinemas to try to stop the infection spreading. Those are today's headlines and that was the lunchtime news. We'll have much more on all those stories with Andy Crane from 5 o'clock tonight. But from me and the rest of the lunchtime team, have a very good weekend. Bye bye for now.